Today we are going to be proving the triangle isosceles theorem. In order to do this, we're going to create an isosceles triangle to show you what this theorem means. So I just, just removed my axes and I'm going to create an isosceles triangle. So I'm going to start with the segment tool and then I'm going to go to the segment with a given length. So this segment right here is going to be AB because an isosceles triangle that by definition has two sides of the triangle congruent. So we can move this around and we actually can move AB and this will be bigger or smaller. So you can see we're creating an isosceles triangle. Using the polygon tool, now we have our, our isosceles triangle and we're going to just mark this. And what this theorem says is that given these two sides are congruent, then the angles across from the sides or the base angles are congruent. So let's write this down that we're going to be proving the isosceles triangle theorem. So let's write this down. I -S -O I really struggle with spelling isosceles. Alright, so we're going to be proving the base angles are congruent. So let's do that and we're going to use a two column proof. So we're going to write down statements and reasons on the other side. and what we're first here is what we're given and what we're given is that AB is congruent to AC so let's write that down AB is congruent to AC and technically these are segments so we're going to put in the segment well actually I'll move this over and then we'll put in those symbols so it's segment AB is congruent to segment AC and I marked this. So there are many ways to prove this but today we're going to be doing this by constructing an angle bisector through that angle BAC or angle A. So we're going to do a construction and we're going to say construct an angle bisector So we actually have a construction tool built into GeoGebra to create our, our angle bisector. So let's use that right now and I'll show you how to do that. It's under here. There is an angle bisector tool. So it says three points or two lines. So I'm just going to do, um, I'm going to click on B, A, C. I have my angle bisector and I'm going to intersect here and I'm going to call this point D. Well, it's J. It already gave me a name, so I'll just make it a little bit bigger. Actually, I'll move this point J out. So you can do that on this. So, definition of an angle bisector is going to say the following. And it looks a little funny because this line goes up this way, but that's okay. Um, definition of angle bisector says that because it's an angle bisector, we can say that this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. I'll put a little line through it and we're going to call it with letters today. So we're going to say angle BAC, AJ, I have to type on this, BAJ is congruent to angle JAC and that's by definition of angle bisector. Next thing we can say is that um, we have a AJ is congruent to itself. It's congruent to itself AJ. And let's put lines over this. And the reason why this is true, any line is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Now we have enough information because, let me mark that it's this off, to say that the left triangle is congruent to the right triangle. Whenever we write down triangles are congruent, we always have to get the, the, um, the letters in the correct order. But I'm going to just go over this with the polygon tool and change these colors so you see what I'm talking about. So we're going to be showing that this triangle 
is congruent to the one on the right. So let's change this color to something different, contrasting it. That's what we're going to be showing. So let's go write that down. And we can say that triangle BAC is congruent to triangle and the B matches the C so they're corresponding so let's put this down here triangle C A J and this was supposed to be B A C was not supposed to be a C it's supposed to be a J so B A J is congruent to C A J and the reason why is because of the side angle side postulate. Almost done. This is enough information almost to say that the two triangles base angles are congruent and the reason why is because of something called corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. CPCTC or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We can say that the angles, the base angles, which is in the first letter angle B, is congruent to angle C. And that, and let me write that down, that's going to finish our proof. So angle B is congruent to angle C. Because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, our last thing that we write in our proof is the symbol that looks like this because we are done. Thank you for watching.